In this episode of Game Terrain Engineering, I'm going to show you how to make the Lonely Tower. So welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. I'm DM Jim, and this time around I've got a, an actual terrain project to share with you something that I believe you should be able to make. It doesn't require any special tools like a 3D printer. It requires chipboard, paint, some odds and ends, cutter, scissors, knife, foam, quarter inch foam. It's a tower. And originally when I started this project, I was going to make two of them. And I did start making two of them. But along the way, one of them got, it, it disappeared. I don't know what happened to it until about a half day later, I found the dog acting very guilty. And I've never used this excuse before in school, but the dog ate it. And that's a true story. I, um, I found bits and pieces of it uh, scattered around the house upstairs and the dog looking very, very guilty. And it was my fault. I should have put the stuff backwards. She is a known jumper up on tables and stuff. I don't know. It, do, it, it doesn't smell like food. I don't know why she hated that tower. But uh, I was originally going to call these the um, the menacing towers. But now I'm calling that. I'm just going to call it the lonely tower. I've only got one to share with you. So let's get to it. This tower has an inner and an outer shell. The inner shell is chipboard and the outer shell is a quarter inch foam. Uh, there's some embellishments and things that I'll show you. But one of the things I wanted to mention before I start this project is this. Whenever I build a piece of terrain, I always reach a point, and it's usually about the halfway point, maybe even closer to the end, where I look at the, the terrain or whatever I'm building and I'm just not happy with it. Uh, maybe it's the color, maybe it's something, uh, you know, an embellishment on it or whatever, but I find that I get really disappointed and I think it looks horrible. But inevitably, I push through and I finish it. And I've, I've noticed that when I'm done with a lot of my projects, uh, even though I was disappointed in it halfway or three quarters of the way, when it's all said and done and the painting's done and the gluing and, the, and it's got the wash and things like that, all of a sudden, magically, it just looks good. And that's how I feel about this one. I did not, the project started out well, the cutting and the, and the template and the, and the folding and gluing, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. Then I got into the painting and I started being a little, at first I loved the color and you'll you'll see in some of the videos where I start sponge painting that I really like the color and I still stand by that. I like the color that I chose. But then when I mixed it with some other colors, it didn't look so good. So I repainted it, um, you know, basically reskinned it and now I'm very happy with it. It, it, it wasn't uh, looking so hot and then all of a sudden everything came together and after I put the wash on and glued it together, bam, I was very happy with it. The Lonely Tower. The, it's, it's brother or cousin, uh, rest in peace. But um, there is a survivor and I'm happy to share it with you. And we're doing some renovations in the house. So you're gonna hear some odds and ends banging occasionally in some of my videos over the next month or two. Not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was somebody banging on something upstairs. So let's get to it. All right, for the Lonely Towers, it all starts with a single piece of chipboard, three inches by three inches. What I want you to do is I want you to measure in from one side a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch, and then from the bottom edges, cut those off. You're gonna end up with a three inch by three inch square with just a slight angle inward that goes up to two and a half inches here. See that? Two and a half. All right, you're gonna need a bigger piece of chipboard. And what I want you to do is watch how I do this. I am gonna create a chain of three tracings of this. Now you can use a pen to trace it, but I'm gonna use my blade and I'm gonna make shallow cuts to trace and then I'll go back and cut it out. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna place this and I'm gonna make one copy just by tracing. And you don't want to overcut, come straight to the corners. And don't try not to go any further. All right, you probably can't see it, but there is a cut on the chipboard there. Next, take the piece and using this left edge, line it up with the left edge or the right edge of the one that's still on the chipboard. 
like this. And you want to make sure that it doesn't need to be right on the line, but it needs to be pretty close so you can actually see the line that you traced. Don't recut this one. Just go around the top, the right side, and the bottom. And then do one more. Left edge against the right edge of the piece that was just traced. Trace the top the side, and the bottom. And when you take this off, don't throw away this part. This is your fourth side of a structure. So you have the tracing here. You can use a, I would suggest using a straight edge. You wanna to try to make these cuts as accurate as possible. Do not cut the right edges where each piece shares a left and a right edge. Don't cut those, but you can cut the, the most right or the rightmost uh, piece. You're going to cut along these lines, but you want to try to go only about halfway through. And see that? I get a nice break. And don't worry about the, the fact that this has uh, got a, a gap in here. Not a big deal. We're going to cover that. And there's three. All right. Now, if I set this down, hopefully what you're seeing here, if I glue this piece in, I'm gonna have this nice little four-sided tower. Now, if you glue this third piece inside and you butt it, you know, one, uh, a flat side against a flat side, you're gonna end up this irregular shaped four-sided structure. So the solution to that, what I'm gonna do, I'll show you here, I cut a piece of cardstock, and it doesn't have to be big, and you can, you can cut, I'm, I'm probably going to do two or three of these. And what I'm going to do is fold this and fold this. And I'm going to glue, I'm going to glue one side to here. You'll notice that I've, I've glued three different tag or three tags on each side instead of two. Changed my mind. Now, after, the, after one set has dried, put glue on the others lay lay it flat with the outside facing down and put some glue on the other side and push them together you know so that they're sort of treated as one piece flatten these down like that and when the glue dries you'll be able to bend this and it'll have the same 45 degree with a little notch cut out uh, just like these other three sections after this dries really good do it on this one now with this one you won't be able to lay it flat. So what you can do is you'll just have to eyeball it and hold it until the glue takes really strong and, uh, and then let it dry completely. The two towers are glued up, but as you can see, they're, they're a little flexible. They need some structure, some rigidity. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut <clears throat> a three inch square out of chipboard again. But if I cut it at three inches, it's going to fit up in there, and I actually want it to sit on the edge, and I can trim it with a knife if it's overshot. So the chipboard is a sixteenth of an inch. So all I've got to do is, that's two sixteenths, or one eighth. So all I've got to do is make the square three and one eighth by three and one eighth. All right, 
let's see if that does it. So yeah, pretty close. There'll be a little bit of overlap, but actually the overlap may not matter because again, I'm gonna be covering this with foam. So there may be some wiggle room there. But I'll go ahead and put a bead of glue down on this one, and then when this one's done, I'll do the second one. There are all sorts of methods that you can use to cut the foam in the shape of each side. Uh, I'm just gonna go the easy route and just place the box down on the foam. And then I'll just trace a line around each side. And again, I'm not concerned about the top. The sides and bottom are more the problem. So after I get it, I'll just go ahead and by hand, I'm just gonna, or by eyeball, I'm just gonna cut this. Now, um, I have two of these, so to distinguish them, what I'm going to do is, now I just, I did this, so I want to match the, each side is a little different, so I want to be sure to match them up, and I'm pretty sure that was the one, let's see, no, it doesn't fit that one, does it fit that one? This is, this is the problem. You always want to make sure to label your parts. It was this one. I had it right. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to label this A and put A on the back of this. And for the other one, I'll use one, two, three, four. That way I don't have two A's, two B's. You get it. Okay, A, B, C, D, four sides. Uh, before I glue these on, of course, I wanna give them a texture of um, stonework. So I'll do that next. Three walls have been bricked. The fourth wall has been bricked, and now I'm going to trace out the door. While the second tower is drying, the glue, the first one's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with 
Mod Podge that has been mixed with black paint. Again, this was a tip that came from Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft. I've used it a few times and I think it's probably one of the most outstanding recommendations in terms of how to, how to uh, black bomb something. Alright, those of you who have watched previous episodes know that I do not scare easily when it comes to wild color choices. Now, normally you would go with just a, a gray, a medium gray, or even a dark gray on this, but I'm going to try tan. Here's why. The object or the structure that these are based on has a metallic shield going around the bottom, which I'll tackle later. But the brickwork behind it has this sand color, and it just caught my eye. I'm going to try to duplicate it. I'm going to do it on one. If I'm not happy, I won't have done it on the second one. But if I do like it, I'll go ahead and do the second one. But I'm going to sponge dry it on, or sponge paint it on, excuse me. While I'm letting the paint dry on the bottom of the towers, I need to start working on the top. Now, the profile of the base at top is three inches, but it's got a quarter inch foam on one side and a quarter inch on the other. So now I'm at three and a half inches. I want the base top to, to extend another quarter inch on each side. So now we're up to four inches. So I need a four inch square piece cut out. Two, three, one, two, three, four. All right, right here. This is going to be the piece I build off of. I'm going to place it on top of the tower. Let me see how they dry they are. Yeah, they're not super dry yet, but this will sit on the top and there will be a, uh, I guess what you would call a battlement going around, but it's not gonna be the notched type. I know what you're thinking. How are, air, how are archers gonna hide and shoot? In this particular model, what I'm basing it on, the top part is just a solid wall that go, uh, you know, maybe waist high that goes around, and the archers were on the top. So, you know, I could add, I guess, the the the, the block type or, or um, you know, s skip every block, but I'm going for <laughs> I'm going for authenticity. I want it to look like the one that. Uh, sorry, I'm looking here from the bottom. I want it to look like the inspiration, so that's what I'm going to go for. All right, so I'm happy with this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, four inches on a side, I want to cut out a 12-inch strip and glue it around here. Half of it's going to be below, half above, and it's going to be approximately an inch thick. All right, now I have a 12 inch length, one inch wide. And just like I made small shallow cuts, I wanna make a cut every four inches on this. But 
this is going to bend and bend. I'll cut one more piece. All right, time to glue the these columns, or I'm not sure what you'd call them, the corner pieces. I'm gonna glue them in. You know what, those feel pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Get the glue in here. Helps if you give it a good slide. This one actually broke when I was sponge painting it. I don't know if you caught that in the video, but uh, doesn't matter because it's getting glued on there like that. And then the final one, There we go. All glued in. Now I'll go do the one of the second tower. Now along the bottom edge of the tower is going to be running a piece of metal. I'm going to paint it metal. It'll be steel, like gray, steel gray. So what I did was I actually measured from here to here and cut out a piece. It was actually like three and an eighth by three. And that gave me this piece. And then I placed the piece on there and made some marks where the column edges are. And I was able to trim it again. And then I cut the bottom one inch off. And this is the piece that will be go in there like that. So right now, all I need to do is cut three, actually two more of these, because the door is gonna have, be a little different. It's gonna look like this, but it's also gonna have a, a thin piece that goes around the door in a circular, semicircular manner. So I'm gonna cut those next. Before I wrap up the tower and start assembling and getting everything put together, I wanted to touch on a couple smaller details. Uh, first thing was on the roof or the top of the tower here, I've cut a just a small hole. I use a little piece of wood as the template. Just cut it out and that's going to be where a ladder. I'm going to make a little ladder to come up because, you know, otherwise on this tower, how, how is somebody supposed to go in and get to the roof? So just for realism in my Frostgrave games, there'll be a ladder here to indicate that the the top of the tower is accessible. Uh, let's see, what else? I cut a piece of foam four inch by four inch, and this will go down in here. Well, let's see, I think it goes on this side, yeah. And it only goes in one way, there it is, I trimmed it. I'm gonna texturize this with a stone pattern, paint it, and of course I'll have to cut out the hole to for the ladder, but this will be the top of the tower. Now this will sit on top like this. You can see kind of what the profile looks like right there. All right, got it? And the tower top and the sides are gonna be painted a gun metal. I've got some different metal types that I'm testing on chipboard right now to see which one looks the best. For the tower top and the sides, I am going to be using this one, brushed metal. It's, uh, let's see, brushed dark gray. I bought about four or five different types. I tested them all on chipboard. I like the color of this one. Now, if it dries too dark, I haven't done it on a large scale, so I may do some dry brushing with a lighter metallic, but I'm gonna give this a shot right now. Okay, projects are always changing, including mine. And I've made a some subtle changes I wanna to explain to you. Uh, the first one is the paint job. I liked the brownish, tannish color that I originally sponge painted onto the sides, but when I put on the metallic plates and top, it just didn't look good. Now the inspiration for this, which I'll show at the end of this video, it did look good, or at least I thought it looked good but not in real life. <laughs> so what I did was I went over the brown with a sponge paint of a light gray, and I'm gonna do some more in the corners here, but I actually like 
like this because it, it gives it a sort of a dirtier look. You can see the gray, but there's some browns coming through it. And I think it looks a little better. Um, I haven't finished the door yet, but as you can see, uh, that's the, and I'm gonna put a wash on this to dull this down. It won't be as shiny as this. But, um, but there it is. And again, I've got to get up in the corners here uh, with some gray. But I think I, I think I like the gray color. I should have just gone that way to begin with. But I was willing to take a chance, and uh, it just didn't end up uh, with something I liked. The other change I'm making is the the plates on the side kind of looked boring. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a bunch of these small brads, and they're very tiny, and I have to cut off the 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 um, pieces that bend back. I just used a pair of clippers and clipped those off and then I glued glued them down five, tried to space them somewhat evenly. And then I'm gonna paint over this again. And then the wash will help these really stand out. They'll get a shadow on them. I'm gonna do that to all of them. So that's where I am right now. I'm almost done with this project and um, I'm really getting anxious to put it all together. All I've got right now to do is to give the top of the tower one more coat of paint here. And then I want to do a black wash on it because the metal, uh, the silver metalish color here is a little shiny for my taste. And I also think the wash will help fill in some of the lost details from the repaint. So let's do the let's do the uh, tower first here. For this, I'm using this really nice color I found. It's zinc from Deco Art. Uh, it's silvery, but it's got just a hint of blue to it. And uh, I started painting the the metal here, and when it dries, it just it just looks so good. Um, you may want to may want to grab a bottle and try it. Um, but uh, I was I was pleased with it. To make the ladder that's going to go in the hole on the top of the tower. It's real simple. I have these, they're not toothpicks, they're wooden dowels that I bought at a hobby shop. I took one and I cut a bunch of equal sized snippets. I'm just going to glue them down. I don't have to make a tall letter. I only want just enough rungs to be visible in the hole. I'm not going to go all the way down. So I'm just going to glue these together on one side and then I'll glue the other side of the ladder on top. Okay, now it's time for the wash. I've mixed up some water and black paint, very thin mixture here. And I'm just gonna go over all the surfaces here. I'm trying to dull this metal. Also bring out some of the darker colors in the stone. So it's done. Uh, I've got the ladder in the top, uh, painted brown, given a uh, dark wash, and everything's glued on, the lid is glued on, and as you can see, it's ready to be used on the gaming table. Now, there's a little story about this. Uh, my son, age 10, my oldest son, loves this game called Kingdom Rush. I play it too, it's fun, and uh, it's an app um, for the iPad. I don't know if it's for Android, I imagine it is. But um, it's really fun. If you've never played it, it's one of those uh, tower defense type games. But my son saw the last project I did where I recreated that uh, the cursed dais uh, from a video game, uh, what we believe to be a snippet of uh, a screen capture of a video game. And we were, I was watching him play Kingdom Rush, and he uh, he said something along the lines of, "You should do one of the towers." for a terrain piece. And I thought, that's not a bad idea. 
I'm not going to get in the habit of making a lot of video game, taking video game terrain and converting it into real tabletop terrain, but it is a good source of inspiration. Um, this one was the Archer Tower. This is actually the upgraded Archer Tower because it has the metal banding around the door and the sides and the, the studs and things like that. The most basic one is just all stone. And I thought about doing that one, but this one really, I just always liked this one. And as you can see, it kind of has a cartoony look to it, which the game has that kind of look. But I was really pleased how it turned out. Now, my original intention for this was to build two. One for me to use in my Frostgrave game and the second one for my son, for him to keep in his room. The, the dog destroyed one. So I originally, I eventually will probably recreate one, but this one's mine. Um, I told my son, you know, this one's for my gaming table and I'll make you another one. Um, he uh, He's fine with that. But I, I just love how it turned out and I'll include some close-up photos at the end of the, uh, at the end of the video. But I hope you like it. It was fun to make. It was, again, it was one of those projects where halfway through I just was not happy with with the way it looked. I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But now that it's done and I'm holding it in my hand, I'm seeing the color schemes and things like that. I really just it's it's fun to look at, it's fun to hold. Um, it's fun to see again something from a, from a video game brought to life in, as a real game, tabletop uh, piece of terrain. So, I've got one more from that game, Kingdom Rush, to do. I'm not going to tell you which one. It's going to be a surprise, but um, it's going to be an upgrade. Uh, I, I used this sort of to test out some uh, techniques for making these kind of structures, uh, and I was very pleased with it. I, I, I learned a few things. I learned what not to do. For example, this four-sided object, my first prototype used four individual squares that I, that I would glue together. And that's a pain, let me tell you. Um, chipboard glues well, but holding it and letting the glue sit and then making sure that it was strong, uh, it occurred to me, I was like, why don't I just cut these pieces as one piece, you know, like this, and then just cut them on the, the uh, seams and then fold it. And I tried it and it worked. So that's how this one was made. But I don't recommend cutting chipboard into pieces and gluing it together. It's just, it's very, it's very stressful. It doesn't, you know, it's, uh, time consuming, but if you want to do it, you, you this could easily have been made that way. But it's techniques like that uh, that I tested and proved to myself that A, this doesn't work or the other way does work. And so I'm going to be doing another tower from, not the Archer Tower, I'm going to be doing another tower from the Kingdom Rush game series. Uh, and maybe I'll do more down the road, but I, I, want to, I want to finish that one and then sort of be done with video game terrain for a while. So that one's going to take me a few weeks or more, and uh, but when it's ready, I'll definitely share it with you. So I hope you liked this. Um, I wish I had two, uh, <laughs> but I've got the one, the Lonely Tower for you. And uh, if you decide to do something like this, please do share a comment, tell me you're going to do it, and when it's done, upload a photo, link it to link it, link to the photo in the comments. I'd love to see uh, what you do with it. But check out Kingdom Rush. It's a really fun game. And it was the inspiration. It, one of the towers in it, the Archer Tower, is the inspiration for this. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for paying attention and uh, listening and watching as I put this crazy thing together. And I will get started on the next project and have that uploaded soon. And until then, I'll see you next time.